With the first pick. Lawrence in a foot race. Will they catch him? Touchdown, Tigers! The Jacksonville Jaguars select Lawrence. Back left corner of the end zone for Amari Rodgers, and they do it again. Another Clemson touchdown. Welcome to this week's edition of the Trevor Cast. Matt Hayes, Graham Marsh, Hayes Carlion here along with you. Want to thank our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac for sponsoring the Trevor Cast. Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. All right, Matt, this is a fun uh, episode of the Trevor Cast. We got a chance to catch up with Grace Rayner, who covers Clemson for the Athletic, covered Trevor Lawrence's career, and uh, really brought a lot of fun insights to uh, to the Trevor Cast. Yeah, I think it's interesting that we get a disinterested party in it, and and not not to say that the coaches aren't disinterested or the or the, or the personnel people we've talked to aren't disinterested. But it's it's good to see a media member who has to cover him every day and and sees things from two sides. It's interesting to see the point of view, how they see things, how they see his development. Um, and I think Grace did a really nice job of explaining what it was like to be around him for three years at Clemson and how he developed over three years at Clemson. And she brings up the throw that you've heard so much about so as many well. Times. I mean, that is the legacy throw, the throw against That's Georgia the, Tech, right? I guess it was week three of the season, um, his freshman season. I, I can't tell you. Well, first off, I, I remember getting a text from a scout like literally minutes after he made the throw. And all it said was, Did you see that throw against Georgia Tech? And I knew exactly what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see it. So I had to wait till halftime of the game I was watching. He's rolling left. He throws across his body, just throws a dart to the corner of the end zone where only the receiver can get it, and the front corner. And it was just a, a phenomenal throw. And I remember seeing that the first time thinking, my God, this guy really is going to be the first pick. And, and I think you could tell just by that one throw and just by the way he moved in the pocket, the way he did it, was just, it was effortless. It was just like a little flick. And I remember thinking, ooh, boy. It's getting real now. It is getting real, and we can't wait to to have it here. Won't be uh, won't be long now. Um, but uh, yeah, Grace was outstanding. I think you're really going to enjoy uh, what the insights that she gave us. So here it is, Grace Rayner, beat writer for the Athletic, joining us here on the Trevor Cast. We're pleased to be joined with Clemson beat writer from the Athletic, Grace Rayner. Grace, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I guess let's just start with uh, your initial couple of uh, weeks covering Trevor, first impression, and then just what was the overall experience like for you covering his collegiate career? Yeah, so when Trevor showed up on campus as a freshman, by then he was already very famous, very established in the in the college football community and, and had been really in the spotlight since he was 13, 14 years old. And so you heard so much about him and you you listened to the way that people talked about him. Um, but of course, you, you know, we all wanted to see it. And what I remember about covering Trevor his freshman year um, was it was pretty instant and pretty immediate that the second that you see him in person and then the second that you see him throw a football, that, that the hype is, is pretty built up and, and pretty worth it. Um, but I think that the, the cool part about covering Trevor over the years has been just kind of watching him come into his own. You know, as a freshman, he was very quiet, trying to beat out a senior incumbent, just kind of kept his head down. As a sophomore, he becomes, you know, a little more vocal, but still coming into his own. And then we see him as a junior really become what I believe is the face of college football, um, the leader of Clemson's team, obviously a Heisman finalist. And here we are now about to see him go number one overall in the NFL draft. Great. So let's move back to uh, this offseason, because I think you made a great point there. When you said he, he became the face of not only Clemson, but, but college football. How do you think he dealt with that? Because clearly there was a lot going on this offseason, uh, and he wanted to. He wanted to be that guy. He wanted to be put in that situation where – he was saying things that everybody would follow. How do you think he dealt with that? Yeah, I think as we've seen Trevor grow up, he has always had this platform, right? But I think that as we've seen him grow up, he's been figuring out how he wants to use it. And that was something that he talked a lot about this off season was, okay, I want to educate myself and I want to find out what I care about and what is important to me and how I want to say it. Um, and then and then use that platform. And so I think with Trevor, we saw him, um, he, we saw him plan Clemson's um, peaceful protest in the in June in this 
summer. We saw him, you know, become one of the faces of the We Want to Play movement. And so I think that as, you know, a lot of college students do, he was learning and growing and figuring out what he cared about. And then he happened to have a platform to, to really get that message out. So it was cool to see him really come into his own in that regard. And Grace, how much do you think that helped him become a leader uh, and expand that leadership even beyond being, you know, a great football player? Yeah, I think it helped tremendously. I mean, you'd be really hard to find a teammate of Trevor Lawrence that doesn't say just great things about him. I think that he had the respect of the locker room pretty immediately. Um, but I think as he got older and really grew into this role, um, it, it it trickled down and, and it, it came even more. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of what you see on the field with Trevor, the poise, the um, ability to flush things when he needs to, the ability to adapt, the ability to process. I mean, I think all of these things are very intertwined with who he is off the field as well. Yeah, he's great. He's going to fit here in Jacksonville. Uh, you know, we were we were talking to Charlie Weiss uh, a few weeks ago, and Charlie was saying this is the best spot for him as opposed to New York and the Jets. This is kind of like an easy transition for him from going to Cartersville to Clemson and now to Jacksonville, very similar type uh, of, of situation. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that just in the fact that I think that he will fit in in a community like Florida. I think he would have fit in really anywhere he went, and I think he's going to change whatever franchise that he's with. I think he's that type of talent and that type of leader. Um, But I do think that Jacksonville is probably more on par with just what his lifestyle has been like leading up to this point. As you said, Cartersville is a tight-knit, small community um, outside of Atlanta. Clemson is very small, tight knit, um, a, a very close feeling. Um, so I think that that yeah, in terms of just navigating to the next step in his career, it does feel like Jacksonville as a city and just as a as a place is probably closer to Clemson and Cartersville than a place like New York City would be. Grace, obviously with this last year, Trevor's final year at Clemson, everything was shut down, everything was virtual because of the pandemic. Um, But what was it like trying to get to know him, trying to get to know his family? Are they uh, pretty guarded or were they pretty open about kind of sharing their background uh, with you guys? Yeah, Trevor has a great family. They're very close. Um, His older brother is simultaneously the exact same and complete opposite from Trevor. Um, <laughs> he, he is a really accomplished artist, and so their hobbies are completely different, but um, their vibe is the exact same. Uh, his mom is very down to earth. He's got a younger sister. Um, his dad's been obviously very involved in his football life. I mean, it's, yeah, he comes, from, he comes from a very close family, um, a family that obviously has been in the spotlight, like I said earlier, since since Trevor was 13, 14 years old. And so this part of it is not, of course, it's, it's increased uh, with every step of his career. And of course, as he goes, what we all presume to be number one, it'll continue to build and build and build. But they are used to Trevor commanding a spotlight and, and being the face of his sport. Now, Grace, you've watched him clearly uh, over, over the years and how the impact he's made on that program as a guy to become the face of the program. He's going to come here in Jacksonville. He's going to be a rookie quarterback. How quickly do you think the locker room here will adjust to him? Is he Does he have that kind of dynamic, magnetic personality where, where they will adjust him quickly and they will glom onto him quickly? Yeah, I think Trevor's greatest strength as a leader is that people are just naturally drawn to him because he does let his play do the talking. Like he's going to, of course, he's going to say something when he needs to say something. If he needs to, you know, step into that leadership role, of course, he's capable of doing it. But I think why Clemson players gravitated to him so much was because here's this superstar you know who is the biggest name in the sport and yet he's very chill very relaxed has a very easygoing vibe I can't remember a single time in a in a press setting where I ever saw Trevor mad or where I ever saw him short with people Um, he's just and Dabo Sweeney talks about this a lot like Trevor is just the same person all the time and so I think that's what's going to make him a natural fit in the locker room. I don't think he's going to be super rah-rah, but I think that he'll immediately have the respect of his teammates just in the way he carries himself and and obviously what he does on the field. And and Grace, you know, we haven't really seen that like you've seen it, but one example was, you know, after the the semifinal loss to Ohio State, and again, everything's virtual, 
and somebody in the press conference makes a comment about his mustache and he like basically plays it off really well and is like thank you and and just moves along and doesn't seem like that in the least bit bothered him a really good game or trevor needs to shave his stash please please mute if you're not speaking uh thank you but, uh... yeah i think what trevor has what i've learned about trevor over the years just based on the things that he's told us is that he has very firmly established like who he is and he's very grounded in that and so I think that that's how he doesn't let external things really upset him. Like he's figured out who is important to him, what is important to him, and and that's enough for him. And so, yeah, and I think he also has um, a, a pretty funny sense of humor. Like I don't know that Trevor gets enough credit for being um, – decently funny um but yeah this 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 girl on zoom basically like you said she didn't know that she was um not muted and basically made a sarcastic comment about how he should stave, shave his mustache and he just you know laughed it off and, and moved on he, he doesn't really uh he is fiercely competitive but i don't think that he um is easily rattled if if that makes sense yeah absolutely and and obviously he's getting ready to get married uh next month um how close have you been able to to get it all to marissa what what can you tell us about trevor's uh fiance yeah so i don't i don't know marissa his fiance but um they are high school possibly even middle school sweethearts um she's from cartersville she played soccer at Anderson University, which is not far from Clemson. Um, so they've obviously known each other for a very long time. And I believe that she has graduated from Anderson, if I am correct on that. And so, yeah, they'll be getting married uh, next month and then starting their life in what we all presume will be Jacksonville. So, Grace, in a career of wow moments on the field, give us like two where you were like, holy cow, this dude, he's the real deal. Oh man, there are so many. Um, I always think about one of the ones I think about. There's two. Yeah, there's exactly two. He he threw a pass as a freshman at Georgia Tech on the move, and he rolled his left and threw across his body to Hunter Renfro, and that was the game where that was the game that won him the starting job. That was week four of his freshman year. And it had kind of built up to this moment of, okay, it looks like Trevor is, you know, getting ready to pass Kelly Bryant. But that Georgia Tech game his freshman year was what really solidified it. And then a week later, he became Clemson starter. Um, but when I think about Trevor, I think the play I'll always remember was in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State in the 2019 college football playoff when he just rips off that 67-yard touchdown run. And this was not long after he had just been absolutely drilled. He took a, a huge hit um, and he was mad and you, you could tell he was mad. And I don't know that Trevor gets enough credit. I think we're getting to the point now where we're giving him the credit that he deserves as a runner. Um, but I just remember that being the total embodiment of like just how insanely competitive he is and how gritty he was and um a lot of clemson fans you know like to joke that he looks like a baby giraffe running out there because he is six six and he's uh he's faster than a lot of people think um but that play i think i'll always remember as just a defining trevor lawrence moment and of course we know how that game ends up and, and he leads clemson to a victory yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, that, that play was incredible toughness. Great, Grace, what are some things that you think that he'll need to work on as he gets to the NFL? What What are some weaknesses in, in his game? Oh, man. I mean, I think that's – at that point, I think that we're probably all – nitpicking but Trevor himself of course has always said there's always room for improvement I mean I think that the big jump that he took from his freshman year to sophomore year was becoming more mobile and I think that that will continue to be something that he'll 
uh, continue to work on. Um, he became just way more effective in Clemson's running game, and then it got to the point where defenses had to respect both his arms and his legs. So I think that that's an area that he'll continue to improve on. And one of the big things that he had talked about coming into his junior season was accuracy, which sounds a little weird, but like coming from Trevor Lawrence because we see him um, and we we see all the incredible throws that he makes. But he did throw eight intercept, interceptions as a sophomore. He wanted to cut that down as a junior. And then I think as he just gets into a new system, that's going to be big for him too. Is he's always been a guy that has wanted to have total command of an offense. And he's been a guy that has that picked up Clemson's offense pretty quickly, but also wanted to learn why and what is everyone else doing and how does this you know all fit together in a bigger piece of a puzzle. So I think that he'll – pretty quickly get into that playbook and and try to figure out all right how how does this all work together as one cohesive unit what do you make out of uh some of the analysts that believe zach wilson's better i mean i feel like i obviously i cover clemson so i don't cover i don't i don't see all these other quarterbacks across the country but i just think that you know just watching trevor i i don't i don't know how he's not the first guy that you want. I don't know how he's not the number one pick. It's not to say that there are not other great quarterbacks in this draft because there are. Um, but I think Dabo Sweeney said it, uh, and I guess it was in December when he said, you know, I don't know how the Heisman wouldn't want to associate its name with Trevor. Like he is the best player in college football. And that's, that's just kind of how I felt. I just felt like every single week it was clear that, that Trevor was uh, one of, if not the best players in college football. And, just has everything you want, size, speed, arm, accuracy, intangibles. He just has everything you want, I think, in your next, quote-unquote, generational quarterback. Grace Rayner, we can't thank you enough for your time. This has been magnificent stuff, and uh, we certainly appreciate it, Grace. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. You're listening to the 1010XL TrevorCast, brought to you by our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. All right, appreciate Grace's time. Once again, the TrevorCast is brought to you by Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. A lot of fun insights there. I liked, you know, hearing about his family and his brother, the artist, and, you know, hearing about how she described him as decently funny. And uh, I, he's going to be fun to cover, I think. You know, I, I think if, if he's good, which, you know, that that's the thing. If he's not good, then it, it's not going to be any fun for anybody. Right. But if he's good, he does come across as, I mean, I... I I don't know how many people would be on a Zoom after they lose the semifinal game right. and have somebody on the Zoom make fun of his mustache and him laugh it off the way he did and just basically be like, thanks, you know, and, and move right along. And right. Um, it, it does seem like he's genuinely a, a really humble, grounded person. He is, and he's, and he's very introspective, too. Uh, I remember sitting down and talking to him at Clemson, and he's, you don't get to see this because it's rare when he's going to do like a one-on-one but he's a guy that I think sees everything around him. And I mean everything. And I don't mean football field. I mean in life. He sees it around him, and he adjusts just really well to it. Um, I, I like the fact when, when Grace was talking about him and about his development, you could see when, when she started talking about, I can't find a teammate that doesn't have a nice thing to say about him. And that goes to your idea of how he's going to be very, not, very good to deal with. Typically with players, when they come out of college football – you know, they're forced into a situation where they have to talk to the media and open locker rooms. They don't have that. There's, I think there might be still one team left that has open locker room. I think it's USC. Other than that, no one does. So they protect these guys now instead of helping them with the reality of, you know, you can't throw them to the wolves, but that's another story for another time. Mm-hmm. But these guys get thrown to the wolves in the NFL media where they have to adjust. And I think he's a guy that, if, again, like you said, if he plays well, he's going to become a really big personality in this league. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us on the Trevor Cast. Once again, this is brought to you by Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning re- lasting relationships since 1905. We will be back next week. Boy, we're getting close to yeah, the end are. here. Yeah. Um, but uh, but we've really enjoyed it. Matt, great job. Graham, great job. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all next week on the Trevor Cast. Thanks for joining us.